Okay, another problem to take a look at. This is one, I mentioned this in another video thinking that it was a different problem. Here's the one that we're gonna talk about. This is one that actually deals with impulse. Impulse is how you go through and you change the momentum of a system. So, a barefoot field goal kicker imparts a speed of 49 meters per second to a football initially at rest. A barefoot kicker gave something 49 meters per second? Okay, I'm not gonna argue, that's fine. They say that the football has a mass of 0.37 kilograms and the time of contact with the ball is 0.021 seconds. What is the magnitude of the force exerted by the ball on the kicker's foot? Sounds like that's going to be something that we're very interested in finding. Okay. We've got someone who is playing sports ball, a very popular sports ball, football. They're kicking it. Let's see. Field goal kicker. Oh, yes, this is the not that football, it's the other football football. Which you think would be my default since I actually am American. But eh, anyway, all right. So, football, I assume that's the case with the field goal kicker. Don't understand why barefoot, but that's fine. We're going to look at the force that's being exerted on the foot and the ball. All right, so they tell us that the mass of the football is equal to 0 0.37 kilograms. And that basically the person kicks the ball. At the beginning, the ball has an initial velocity of zero meters per second. It's probably just sitting there. And after the ball is leaving the person's foot, the final velocity after that collision is going to be 49 meters per second. Now here's one that gets a little bit tricky. You might want to go through and try and set up a system in which you could conserve the momentum. That's one thing that a lot of people would want to go do. The problem is, if I did what we normally do, which is include both of the objects that are colliding, the person and the football, the problem is the person isn't going to slide backward after, after kicking the ball because they're probably standing on actual ground and you don't normally see that. Now, if it were completely iced over and they kicked the football, yeah, they would actually slide backwards. For an example of that, think back in class when we did Newton's third law of motion and I was on the cart and I threw that bag. I actually moved back the opposite way. But here's where some of the momentum stuff comes in. That's not going to end up being the case. The person's not going to slide backwards because there is a significant external force on that person, friction. So in real life, you wouldn't see every time they kick the ball, they start sliding backwards because there are significant external forces and therefore the momentum is not conserved. More specifically, the momentum of anything that we could look at easily is not conserved. One of the things that we could do is we could take the entire earth and that wouldn't have any significant external forces. But by the time we look at the entire earth, that's so big that we wouldn't be able to solve the numbers we're looking for. That's okay. We've actually already been given the initial and final velocities here. What we're actually being asked about is the magnitude of the force on the person's foot. Okay, well, it's funny that I brought up Newton's third law because what we're actually looking for, if we can find the force that the foot applies onto the football, it will be equal and opposite to the force that the football applies onto the foot. So what we're actually looking for is the force applied onto the football. And the reason we want to do that is now what we're going to do is instead of this system, which will not have, ah, stop that, momentum conserved, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this with momentum impulse. My new system is the football. And its momentum is not conserved. Its momentum will change. It starts off with no momentum, and it gains quite a bit of momentum. We're going to use momentum impulse. And that equation looks like this. J, the impulse, is equal to my change in momentum. Now, we can say change, but once again, here's that delta that Sanchez always seems to be fixated on. Delta, as a reminder, is always final minus initial. And 
as we talked about in class. The impulse is also equal to the force times the time, how long the collision is actually in happening. They gave us some additional information here that I believe I read, but I did not write down. The time of the collision is going to be equal to 0 0.021 seconds, 21 milliseconds. We've mentioned in class that most collisions, real-world collisions, happen really quick. They're a fraction of a second. All right. So here's the impulse, although we don't really need to worry about it too much. What we want to find is we've got information that we can find the momentum, or more accurately, the momenta, both the initial and final. So we can find delta P, and we will set that equal to F. That will be the force applied from the foot onto the ball in a time period of 0.21 seconds. This is what's changing for the football. This must be equal to the force applied over a given time period. And so now we can find the force of the foot on the ball. And by Newton's third law, that number, the magnitude, will be the same as the force of the ball on the foot, which is what we're asked for. So what we need is delta P. We can take delta P. It's going to be equal to FT. Delta P is going to be P final minus P initial. Our final momentum minus our initial momentum, that'll be equal to our force times our time. Well, our final momentum will be our mass times our final velocity minus our mass times our initial velocity, and that will be equal to the force times the time. Now that I've got all this set up, I can start plugging things in. I believe the, math, the mass we said was 0 0.37 kilograms. Check. Yep. Times the final velocity, 49 meters per second, minus the mass times the initial velocity, but that's actually zero kilogram meter per second because the thing wasn't moving. There's no momentum to begin with. Equals my force times the time, which we said was 0 0.021 seconds. All right. And multiply this out. Here's my change in momentum, specifically delta, final, minus initial, 0.37 times 49 minus 0. So we've got 18.13 kilogram meter per second. This is my new momentum, my final minus my initial, so that's my change. That's going to be equal to my force times the time that the collision happened in. I now divide both sides by 0 0.021, and I find that my force is a whopping 863.3, whatever, 863 newtons. Why do I know it's in newtons? Well, kilogram meter divided by second, divided by another second is kilogram meter per second squared, which is a newton. And more to the point, if you put SI in, which we've done, then you will get SI out. As a quick side note on this, this is our answer. That's the force that the foot applies onto the ball. And by Newton's third law, this is also the magnitude of the force that the ball applies onto the foot. Uh, to put this in perspective, this is about 200 pounds. It's 196 pounds is what that force would be in units that you're more used to. Hence why I'm a little worried about someone doing this barefoot. Regardless, that's what we come up with. Uh, let's double check if that's right. 863.33333 newtons. All right, and that's how you apply this.